Father, we thank you for another opportunity to gather at your presence today. We pray that as we have come to your presence, you bless us through your word and minister to our hearts in Jesus' name. We pray that you fill our hearts, fill our cups to overflowing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Glory, honor, power, majesty, be unto Christ our Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, honor, power, majesty, be unto Christ our Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, honor, power, majesty, be unto Christ our Lord. Glory, hallelujah, glory, honor, power, majesty, be unto Christ our Lord. I will praise God in my heart always. I will praise God in my heart always. I will praise him. I will praise God in my heart always. I will praise God in my heart always. What about you? I will praise God in my heart always. I will praise God in my heart always. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Hallelujah, amen. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, hallelujah, amen. Praise God, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, hallelujah, amen. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, hallelujah, amen. No, you can get to heaven without S A L V A T I O N. No, you can get to heaven without S A L V A T I O N. Sing it loud, sing it loud, loud and clear. S A L V A T I O N. Sing it loud, loud and clear. S A L V A T I O N. No, you can't. No, you can't get to heaven without. S A L V A T I O N. No, you can't get to heaven without. S A L V A T I O N. Sing it loud, sing it loud, loud and clear. S A L V A T I O N. Sing it loud, loud and clear. S A L V A T I O N. Whosoever says, Mountain be thy removed. By faith in the Lord, it shall be removed. Whosoever says, mountain be thy removed. By faith in the Lord, it shall be removed. Whosoever says, mountain be thy removed. By faith in the Lord, it shall be removed. I am thou whosoever amen. 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 I am thou whosoever amen. I say, whosoever says, mountain be thy removed, by faith in the Lord, it shall be removed. Whosoever says, mountain be thy removed, by faith in the Lord, 
it shall be removed. I am the whosoever. Amen. 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 He sends his word and he healeth them. Oh Lord, send your word and heal me. He sends his word and he healeth them. Oh Lord, send your word and heal me. Lord sends his word and he healeth you. Oh Lord, send your word and heal us. He sends his word and he healeth them. Oh Lord, send your word and heal me. He sends his word and he healeth them. Oh Lord, send your word and heal me. Nothing prayer cannot do. Jesus answers prayers, nothing prayer cannot do. Jesus answer prayers, nothing prayer cannot do. Jesus answers prayer, 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 nothing prayer cannot do. Jesus answer prayer, nothing prayer cannot do. Jesus answer prayer, Jesus set me free. I shall not be bound. Jesus set me free, and I shall not be bound. Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. I cannot be bound. I cannot be bound since Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound since Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound since Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. I cannot be bound. You cannot be bound. Jesus set you free. You cannot be bound since Jesus set you free. And you cannot be bound since Jesus set you free. You cannot be bound. You cannot be bound. Jesus set me free. You cannot be bound. Jesus set me free. And I shall not be bound. Jesus set me free. I cannot be bound. I cannot be bound. By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. By the Holy Ghost and power, just as the prophet says, this is the day of the Lord's reign. God is moving in his power again. By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. By the Holy Ghost and power, just as the prophet says, this is the day of the Lord's reign. God is moving in his power again. By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. Breaks the yoke, anointing breaks the yoke, anointing breaks the yoke. By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke, anointing breaks the yoke. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free, Jesus. 
Jesus' name. I'm free, I'm free by the grace of God I am. No more in chains, I'm born again. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free in Jesus' name. Yes, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free in Jesus' name. You know that I'm free, I'm free by the grace of God I am. No more in chains, I'm born again. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free in Jesus' name. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free in Jesus' name. Yes, I'm free, and I'm free by the grace of God I am. No more in chains, I'm born again. I'm free, I'm free. I'm free in Jesus' name. Oh, you're free, you're free, you're free in Jesus' name. You're free, you're free by the grace of God you are. No more in chains, cause you were born again. You're free, you're free, you're free in Jesus' name. I'm saved, I'm saved by the grace of God I am. No more in chains, I'm born again. I'm free, I'm saved, I'm free in Jesus' name. Free, I'm free, I'm free in Jesus' name. I'm free, I'm free, by the grace of God I am. No more in chains, yes, I'm born again. I'm free, I'm free. I'm free in Jesus' name. It set me free. It set me free. Yes, he broke the bands of prison for me. I'm back to God, my Savior and King. All glory to God. He set me free. He set me free. He set me free. Yes, he broke the bands are prison for me. I'm back to God, my Savior and King. All glory to God. Thank God I'm free. Thank God I'm free. Thank God I'm free. Yes, he broke the bars of prison for me. I'm back to God, my Savior and King. All glory to God. Thank God I'm free. Thank God you're free. Thank God you're free. Yes, he broke the bars of prison for you. You're back to God, your Savior and King. All thanks to God. Praise God you're free. Thank God you're free. Thank God you're free. Yes, he broke the bars of prison for you. You're back to God, your Savior and King. All oh, praises to God. Thank God I'm free. My God is not dead. He's alive. My God is not dead. He's alive. My God is not dead, he's alive. I feel it in my heart, yes, I feel it in my soul, and I feel it all over me. My God's not dead, my God's not dead, he's alive. My God is not dead, he's alive. My God is not dead. He's alive, I feel it in my heart, and I feel it in my soul. Yes, I feel it all over me. My God is not dead, my God is not dead. He's alive, my God is not dead. He's alive, my God is not dead. He's alive. I feel in me my heart, I feel in me my soul, I feel in my love and me. Alive, alive, my Savior is alive.
alive. My Savior is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive. My Savior is alive, alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Savior is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Savior is alive. Sing My Savior is alive, alive forevermore, alive, alive. My Savior is alive, alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Savior is alive forevermore, sing God power power belongs to 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 God all power belongs to God power power belongs to God yes belongs to God power power 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 belongs to God, power, 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 power belongs to God, power. I am that I am, I am that I am.
Lord, he said, yeah. it's power night, yeah. solution night, yeah. yoke breaking night, yeah. something will happen in your life. What are you? It's coming your way. Yeah. Father, we thank you for what you have done already. Lord, we pray the name of Jesus will be mighty in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Yeah. Nothing impossible in that name. No solution will miss us in that name. I pray you send your power forth with your word tonight in Jesus' name. Move every mountain. Destroy the works of the devil. Set your people free. Let there be joy in the house tonight in Jesus' name. Confirm your word. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. Consider we're coming to Mark chapter 7 tonight. We're reading from verse 24 all through to verse 37. Let me select some of the verses for you to understand what we're looking at today. From verse 24, it says, And from this he arose. And he went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon, and he entered into an house, and would not, would have no man know it, but he could not be healed. For a certain woman, whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, had of him, and came and fell at his feet. She brought her problem. The problem of the house, the problem of the home, the problem of the daughter unto Christ. Look at the final result in Bastachi. In Bastachi, and when he was come to a house, he found the devil come out and a daughter laid upon the bed. Peace had come. Amen. Deliverance came. And calmness came to that daughter, like the calmness is coming to your house tonight. Yeah. And then we're told what happened after that, that he went in verse 31, again departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon. He came unto the sea of Galilee. And we're told through the midst of the coast of Decapolis, and they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put a sand upon him. They asked for a favor and they demanded that Christ will touch the child and heal the child. He never said no to any request like that. He will not say no to you. They will not say no to your family. Amen. They will not say no to your neighbors. Amen. Look at the final result, verse 37. In verse 37, and they were beyond measure astonished. And they said, he had done all things well. He maketh both the dead to hear and the dumb to speak. That final testimony is the testimony we have concerning Jesus Christ. And any time you come in encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, if you really connect with him, that's the final thing you are going to find in your heart and in your spirit and in your life, in your behavior, in your character, in your profession, in anything that concerns you, you will have to testify when that thing happens, like it's happening tonight, he has done all things well. Say that with me. He has done all things well. That was the testimony. Despite the opposition of devils and men, in the face of religious and rigid tradition, the testimony still was, in spite of all those things, he has done all things well. 
confronted with unbelief and ignorance of unbelieving men and sinners. All the same, he has done all things well among the impotent, among the incurable. When he touched them, when he had contact with them, the testimony came out, he has done all things well over the turbulence of the waves of the sea of the storm and the roaring of the sea at the end of it all once christ comes in and he manifests his power the testimony is over the storm over the waves he has done all things well if in your family there is any turbulence in your family there is any harassment of the enemy if in your family tonight there's any storm or any waves by the time we're finished tonight what's your testimony he has done all things well the father testified about his only begotten son the holy ghost affirmed about the very son of god the same thing in everything he did in all the places he went in all the families he touched in all the people he saved he has done all things well the sick rejoiced and their friends and neighbors rejoiced and confirmed with them and why were they rejoicing? Because he has done all things well. The disciples observed, even the Pharisees and Caiaphas, and they all whispered, he has done all things well. All through past generations, until this generation, the testimony is still the same. Because Christ has not changed, the testimony has not changed. What's the testimony today? He has done all things well. All who have had any real encounter with him upon testifying and upon touching him and he touching them, the thing was uniform with everybody. He has done all things well. As you connect with the Lord tonight, as you reconcile with the Almighty God tonight, as you look at the scriptures tonight, as you hold on to the promises of God tonight, and as you say everything Christ has provided, everything Christ has done is for who? For me. And you know that is for you. And you plug into that, at the end, something will come out of your mouth. He has done all things well. We're talking about Jesus tonight, the unchangeable Christ. We're talking about Jesus tonight, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We're talking about Jesus tonight, the one that saves, and the one that heals, and the one that delivers, the unchangeable Christ, still doing all things well. That's what we're looking at tonight, the unchangeable Christ, still doing all things well. And tonight, is still active and alive. The risen Christ, the mighty Christ, the omnipotent Christ, and the omnipresent Christ that is with you right there. That thing that you call incurable will be killed tonight. That thing you call impossible will be possible tonight. And it will wipe away your tears. He will break every yoke. He will do all things well. I, I, can all, I can almost see you while you are going back home tonight. Song in your mouth. Joy in your heart. And everything that is gloomy and dark, everything is taken away in Jesus' name. And as I follow you to your house and you enter your house like this, you announce to the people you meet at home, he has done all things well. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. The unchangeable Christ still doing all things well. Three things we're looking at tonight. Number one, the perseverance of a gentle with great faith. The first person that came to Christ, she came knowing I will not go back empty handed. She came knowing I'm going to get something from Christ tonight. She came knowing that her great faith will not be disappointed. Point number one, the perseverance of a gentle with great faith. Point number two, the promise of God and its fulfillment. What God had promised. 
what God had provided and what God had pronounced. And he had said, this is what I will do as we look at the second part of the story, the fulfillment came. No disappointment in your life? Yeah. Expectation in your life? Yeah. Fulfillment in your life in Jesus' name. The promise of God and its fulfillment. Now point number three, the perception of his greatness and finality. The perception of the people that came to Christ, of the people that touched Christ, of the people that connected with Christ, they perceived his greatness. Nothing was impossible for him. They perceived his greatness. He did everything well, and he became the final authority in their lives. All the people that tried to help them, they had tried and failed. The physicians had failed, and the helpers had failed. And when they came to him as the final authority, he put a finality and a final stop to every problem of their lives finality tonight yeah. I said finality tonight yeah. you don't have to go on in your life crying and you don't have to go on in your life as if you are an unfortunate person Christ is there and whenever we come to Christ he brings a finality yeah. the perception of his greatness and the finality let's come back to point number one is the perseverance of a gentile with great faith i'm coming back to mark chapter 7. mark chapter 7. i'm reading from verse 25 for a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit had of him and came and fell at his feet the woman was a greek that's a gentile a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. I want you to understand, the daughter was not there. The Lord does not need a physical contact before that blessing can pass on to you. Even at a distance, even while you are far away watching, where you are watching now, as the word comes forth and the name of Christ comes forth, you are delivered in Jesus' name. And so she came alone. She didn't bring the child. Maybe the child was too violent or so troubled and traumatic so that she could not bring that girl. But all the same power will touch her where she is. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled. For it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Understand what Jesus was saying? He said, the children of Israel, they were the children of the kingdom. And the promises and the provision belonged unto them. The Gentiles were like dogs. And it was not tried right to give the children's bread unto dogs what jesus said was true all i've seen that and come short of the glory of god but the gentiles have seen further and they have made themselves dogs unclean unacceptable in the sight of the almighty god and so jesus told the truth and the woman understood the truth and the woman did not say do you mean i'm a dog do you mean i'm not acceptable do you mean I'm a rejected Gentile? Okay, if that's the way uh, Jesus feels and he's accommodating all the ideas of the Jewish people. Bye-bye. I don't have anything to do with you. That woman was wise. You'll be a wise woman. You'll be a wise man. And what you have come for, if you are wise and you keep staying, you will get. Look at, look at verse 28. And she said... And she answered and said, yes, Lord. Don't ever contradict the Lord, whatever he says. He says, you're a sinner. Yes, Lord. He says, you're unclean. Yes, Lord. He says, you are not qualified by yourself to enter the kingdom of God. Yes, Lord. He says, you are powerless. He says, you are impotent. And he says, all oh, your righteousness is as filthy rags. Don't argue. Yes, Lord. Somebody there say, yes, Lord. She said, yes, Lord, and then, but she didn't stop there yet. The dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. Wonderful. 
That's wisdom. The Lord will give you wisdom. The wisdom to pray. The wisdom to ask the Lord. And the wisdom to demand what you need. And it will be given unto you. Look at verse 29. And he said unto her, For this saying, For this saying go thy way, The devil is gone out of thy daughter. For that saying, For the proper prayer, and for the proper answer, that devil is gone from the daughter. And then it says in verse 30, And when she, came, when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out. That's what you'll find. I said that's what you'll find. And her daughter laid upon the bed. Let me read a full account to you in Matthew chapter 15. The same story, but Matthew writes with some details. You know, Matthew was a tax collector, and he used to keep records, and he wrote everything and has given us the details here. As I look at the detail, I'm going to divide this into three subtitles. Number one, the prayer for great favor. The prayer for great favor. What the woman came for was not a small thing. It was something that no physician in South Phoenicia, in her own gentle community, could do for her. It was a great favor. It was something that not even a Jewish priest could do for her. A great favor. Just one person in the whole of the land, and his name is Jesus. His name is Savior. His name is Redeemer. His name is Deliverer. Just that one person could do this for her, the prayer for great favor. There's a second part to this. Number two, her perseverance with great fervency. She didn't allow her fervency to cool down, her faith to cool down, her prayer to cool down, her request to cool down, her perseverance with great fervency, and then the power of great faith. The power of great faith. Faith will never fail. And if you have faith in Christ tonight, I shouldn't say if, I should say since you have faith in Christ tonight, all things are possible. Yeah. Look at the first part here. I'm reading from chapter 15 of Matthew, verse 22. The prayer, the plea for great favor. Look at verse 22 here. And, and behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. And he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. You know, some people are easily discouraged. Some people are easily annoyed. And they feel, what kind of insult is this? I came all the way from the coast of, of uh, Sidon, and I'm pleading, the son of David, I'm not asking you, Peter. I'm not asking you, John. I'm not asking you, James. I'm asking the Lord. And it's the Lord for all. It's Lord for everyone. He's the son of God and the son of David. And he is not only for the Jews, it's for the Gentiles. Even the Old Testament said so. And I'm asking the Lord, and you are telling the Lord to send me away. All right, if that's your attitude, take your Jesus and monopolize him. Take your Jesus and do anything you want to do with him. Bye-bye, I'm going. Some people, they wear their temper on their sleeves. And they're easily annoyed. But this woman said, no, I came for something. I'm going to get what I came for. I came for something tonight. Somebody there. And I'm going to get what I came for. And whatever the attitude of the people around, whatever the attitude of the people who are close to the Lord Jesus Christ, if the physical is not going to discourage you, it's not going to put you off, you will receive. Yeah. Somebody there said you will receive. Yeah. 
and then look at verse 24 but he answered and said i am not saint but unto the house of the lost sheep of the house of israel that woman had that but he that said she not she did not hear verse 25 and she and she came then came she and worshipped him saying lord he still called him lord he said you are lord he said you are master whatever you're saying you're saying out of your divinity out of your sovereign i accept that completely and then she said lord help me he will help you tonight yeah. and he answered and said it is not meat it is not right even if I wanted to do it, how can I do it? It is not right to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Uh, that's a test of our faith. You will pass the test. Yeah. You will not go back home empty-handed. Yeah. You will not say, I'm annoyed. You will not say, I'm angry. You will not say, I'm disappointed. So that's the way they are. All those disciples near Christ, even Christ himself, look at what he's telling me, the prayer for great favor. As you come and you say, Lord, I will not be left out, you will not be left out. Yeah. He will answer your prayer. Yeah. All right, he will answer my prayer. Yeah. Hey, look, at, look at Matthew chapter 17. Matthew I'm reading to you from verse 17, and I'm reading from verse 15. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 17, and we're reading from verse 15. In verse 15, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and so vexed, and of times he falls into the fire, and of into the water and i brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him here is another case of a man pleading of a man praying of a man asking the, the lord jesus had gone to the mount of transfiguration and he went with peter james and john and the rest of the disciples, nine of them remaining, they were there. And the man brought his son unto them. And he said, don't you have power? Have you not received? Has he not delegated his authority and power unto you? All right, here is my boy. Here is my only son. Help me and cast the devil out. And they could not. And the man did not say, okay, I'm going home. Maybe it's not the will of God. Maybe this is my destiny. Maybe this is what God wants for me. God does not want evil for you. Yeah. If nine disciples, if nine apostles have tried and the problem is not solved, wait, don't go. A solution is coming your way. Yeah. You look at verse 17. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither unto me. The solution is coming nearer. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. The child was cured from that very hour. He will repeat that in your life today. The second thing I want to point out here in the case of this woman is her perseverance with great fervency. Her perseverance with great fervency. Let's come back to that Matthew chapter 15. The same story, but it's telling us some details, giving us some details here. Matthew chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 24. In verse 24, and he answered and said, I am not saint, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she, after Jesus had said that. You see, there are some people, they're looking for the promises of God. Maybe I get this promise that will solve my problem. I get that promise that will solve my problem. The problem of sin in somebody's life. 
the problem of sickness in somebody's life and the problem of evil spirit in somebody's life and the problem of suffering in somebody's life the problem of society heaping a lot of things on you i'm looking for a promise and you cannot find a promise and you ransack and you search all through the Bible and you cannot point your finger on this, the promise that addresses my problem. Look at this woman. The woman did not have any promise that she can lay hold on to. And Jesus said, you don't have your promise. You don't have your provision. What can I do for you? I'm not saying to only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And all the same she came. Such people will never be disappointed. The people who know that God created them. And because he's my creator, he must solve my problem. He mustn't create me for nothing. He mustn't create me for suffering. And the people that know that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. And he died for my sin. And he died to take the consequence of sin away. There must be solution to my problem. Solution to the problem your family. Solution to the problem your personal life. Solution to the problem anywhere you find yourself. You may not be able to point at any particular promise, but all the same, if God is God, he will help you. If Jesus is the very son of God, he will help you. And so she came and she worshipped him and said, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meat, it is not right, it is not proper to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, truth Lord, I will never accuse the Lord of saying something wrong. Everything you say, my Lord, is true. Everything you say, my Lord, is factual. There are people that call Jesus Lord. And then they get angry at him. God, what are you looking at? Jesus, what are you looking at? Why have you done this? Why have you not done this? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? And they accuse the Lord. They almost get to the border of blasphemy. And they say, hey, Jesus is Lord and Jesus is Savior. But I cannot understand why this happened and why this happened and why that happened. And they accuse the Lord of being unfaithful and being unfair. How could this happen to me? I serve you. I came from my place and I come to you and I'm pleading would you do this and you are calling me dog? That cannot be true. You don't know my life. You don't know me. If you knew me, you will not say that. Stop all that argument. Jesus knows more about you than you know about yourself. Give me a good amen. amen. And the woman said, you are Lord and you are truthful. If you can say in your life anything happening, the rain falling, the storm roaring, and the mountains moving, and all in-laws are saying this and saying that, every accusation is coming to you, and they're saying, uh, she goes to deeper life. He goes to deeper life. But she, look at this and look at this. She is not, she is not clean. She is not all right. And then you go to Jesus and say, Jesus, why? You see Jesus making them to talk to you like that? No. So you just go to Jesus and worship him and say, Jesus, whatever they say, whatever they do, however they act, however they, they react, Jesus, you are my Lord. Somebody there, Jesus, you are my Lord. And Jesus, you are always truthful. You are not far from your miracle. Yeah. And so now, point in the, the third one here, the power of great faith. The power of great faith. The faith that will not let go. The faith that will not give up. The faith that will not say, okay, maybe I don't have the luck today. Maybe I don't have the breakthrough today. I'm going back home. You will not go back empty-handed. Yeah. Did it you come for something? Get what you came for before you go. Don't go. Don't go. Remain until that scene from heaven drops upon your life and it is coming your way. And look at it from verse 28 now. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, 
O woman, great is thy faith. O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. What's, what even some Pharisees didn't get, he got, she got. What some Sadducees didn't get, she got. What some Jewish people, that they, they had the bread of the children, what they didn't have, she got it. What other people have not got before you, you will get. Yeah. O woman, O man, O boy, O girl, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole, from that very hour. This is your hour. Yeah. This is your time. Yeah. The Lord will not disappoint you. Yeah. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3. Look at the ability of the Lord. And look at the strength of the Lord. And look at the power of the Lord. That thing that looks impossible has now become possible. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh where that worketh in you in us it will happen yeah. ephesians chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 16 ephesians chapter 6 verse 16 above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the furry darts of the wicked. All the furry darts of the wicked. How many furry darts of the wicked are you going to punch? All. You are going to be free. I see free people in front of me today. Free and free indeed in Jesus' name. Let, let, let's come back now. Let's come back to Mark chapter 7. We're coming to point number 2. The promise of God and its fulfillment i'm reading from mark chapter 7 and i'm reading from verse 31 mark chapter 7 we're reading from verse 31 look at this and again departing from the coast of tyre and sidon he came unto the sea of galilee through the midst of the coast of uh, of decapolis and they bring unto him one that was deaf, 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 and had an impediment in her speech. And they beseech him, they pleaded with him, they begged him, they prayed him to put his hand on him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears and his speech and touched his tongue and looking up to heaven he sighed and said unto him a father and that is be opened and straightway that means immediately that means instantaneously that means that at that very time what is the touch of the lord in your life straightway straightway now immediately it says straightway, his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plainly, and he spake plainly. You will speak plainly. Yeah. Why did they know that they should bring a person like this unto Christ? What are they looking for? What motivated them? What engineered them? What prompted them? That a person had an impediment in the speech. A person could not hear. He was deaf. And then they brought him to Jesus. Why? Number one, the promise of the Almighty. The promise of the Almighty. And then number two, the possibilities of his authority. The possibilities of his authority. He had heard what he had done in other places. He said, if he did that there, he can do this here. If that happened in that other place, at that other shore, this one will happen here. If what we have heard that he did in Jerusalem, in Canaan of Galilee, 
in Capernaum and in Nazareth, all those places, those things he did there, he has the same authority and the same power, he will do it here. Number one, the promise of the Almighty. Number two, the possibilities in his authority. Number three, the publicity after their astonishment. The publicity after their astonishment. Number one, what promise were they standing on? What promise were they relying on? Look at Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35. It's good to study your Bible. And it's good to know the promises of God so that whenever a problem arises in your life, arises in your family, arises in your Christian life, you'll be able to say, according to the promise of the Almighty, I know that this problem will be solved. My problems are solved. I say chapter 35, and I'm reading from verse, I'm reading from verse uh, 4. Look at verse 4 here. Say to them, that of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Amen. Even God with the recompense, he will come and save you. Amen. You see, you must know the promise of God that if you fell into a dungeon, if you fell into a pit, if you fell into sin, if you fell into evil, if you fell into shame, you must know the promise of God, he will come and save you. If you fall sick, you fall into sickness, you must know the promise of God, he will come and save you. If you fall into poverty and penury, you must understand there's a promise of God, he will come and save you. Now look at verse 5, look at verse 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Look at that. Look at the promise. This promise was talking away there, and those people didn't heal. Because of the promise of the Almighty, Christ is here. It's the fulfillment of that promise. Let's take uh, this person to him. The eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. That's why they came. That's why they came. They knew the promise was there. And because of that promise, that's why they came. The promise of the Almighty. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. And I'm reading from verse 14. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among these people. Even in marvelous work and a wonder, for the wisdom of the wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, in that day, when I do the wonder, in that day, when I bring the wonder worker, the miracle worker, in that day, when I send my only begotten son, in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. You see, you must know the promise of God. They knew the promise of the Almighty. That's why when Christ came, they said, He has come. The fulfillment of the promise has come. And this is our day. In that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. And the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity, out of darkness. That's all the amen you can give. Hey, look at look at this, look at this. I see chapter 32. I see chapter 32. I'm reading from verse 3 and verse 4. And the eyes of them that see shall not be dim. And the ears of them that hear shall hearken. The heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge. And the tongue of the stammerers, that man they brought had impediment in his speech. And here is a promise that I've been waiting to be claimed. There are many promises of the word of God waiting to be claimed. You are going to claim them tonight. Yeah. And he said, the tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. Ready to speak plainly. The promise is going to be fulfilled in Jesus' name. And now we come to the possibilities of his authority. The possibilities of his 
authority. We're coming back to Mark, and we're reading this time, Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse, uh, reading from verse 12. Mark chapter 2, we're looking at verse 12. And immediately, he arose. Immediately. Somebody help me shout that word immediately. Yes. When is your miracle tonight? Yes. When is the touch of the Lord upon your life? Yes. When will all that painful thing be rolled out of your life? Yes. Immediately he arose and he took up his bed and went forth before them all in so much that they were amazed and they glorified God saying, we never saw it on this fashion. We never saw it on this fashion. Luke chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 36. Luke chapter 4. We're reading from verse 36. In Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 36. And they were all amazed. And speak among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commandeth the unclean spirits. What happened? And they come out. And they come out to be done tonight. He is creator. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word came and he dwelt among us. And we beheld this glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. And he'll manifest that truth and grace tonight in every life. Yeah. And look at Psalm 33. In Psalm 33, I'm reading from verse 9. Psalm 33. We're reading from verse 9. For he speak, and it was done. He speaks, and it will be done. He commanded, and it stood fast. He commanded, unclean spirit, they came out. They couldn't argue. They couldn't say, no, we're not coming out. No, we're too strong here. And no, we've been here for a long time. Every evil spirit will come out. Yeah. Number one, the promise of the Almighty. Number two, the possibilities of his authority. Number three, the publicity after their astonishment. Let's come back to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. They were astonished. They were surprised. They were amazed. And it says, look at verse 30, chapter 7, reading from verse 36. And he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much the more, a great deal, they published it. They were so astonished, they couldn't hold back. They were so astonished, they couldn't stop talking about it. You'll be so astonished, you'll not be able to stop talking about it. <laughs> Luke chapter 8. In Luke chapter 8, look at this, in verse 39. Luke chapter 8, chapter 8 verse 39. Return to thine own house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. There are some people that say, I don't know how to do publicity. I don't know how to tell other people, you know, when something good has happened to you. Uh, you know, you've gone to school, and then you didn't know you will make it uh, so high like this. All of a sudden, the result came out, and they said, you were number one. And they said, you had first class. You said, me? Somebody told you that. And then you went to the notice board yourself, and you saw your name, and you saw a treating against your name. First class boy, first class girl, first class man, woman. And then you came out of that, 
and you are smiling or are you frowning and then the first friend you met and you said something happened i can see it on your face do you close your mouth no. what do you say no. i made it i got it you mean you pass no don't tell me that that i just passed i passed with flying colors i made first class you are going to make first class in face first class in miracle first class in moving your mountain first class and the blessings the lord is going to give unto you first class miracle first class blessing and first class breakthrough in your life in jesus name and when that has happened you will not say i don't know how to talk about it you will talk you will publicize and you will do it with joy you will do it with excitement look at verse 40 of that passage and it came to pass that when jesus was returned the people gladly received him for they were all waiting for him we will talk about christ we'll talk about the gospel Let's come back to Mark. I'm reading from chapter 13, verse 10. Mark, chapter 13, verse 10. It says, And the gospel must first be published among all nations. If that gospel has come to your life and has saved you, publish it, publicize it. If that gospel has come to you and you are healed, publicize it. If that gospel has come to you and you are saved and sanctified, publicize it. If that gospel has come to your family and it has changed your family and turned your family around, publicize it. The gospel of the kingdom must be published, and then it says, among all nations, you'll be part of this. You will talk. Amen. You'll not be talking what people are talking on the street. You know, this is bad. The economy is bad. Politics is bad. Everything is down. We have good news. Amen. We have the gospel. Amen. Jesus is still alive. Amen. And he's able to change and turn everything around. Amen. Don't publicize bad news. Publicize what kind of news? good news some people's lives will be transformed and changed around you in jesus name <laughs> point number three now we're coming to mark chapter seven mark chapter seven i'm reading verses 30 and 37 it's a conclusion of the first part of the record and a conclusion of the second part of the record i'm coming to mark Chapter 7, verse 13. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. Verse 37. And they were beyond measure astonished, saying, He has done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Point number three, the perception of his greatness and finality. They searched in all the history and they looked at the people that were in the Old Covenant, Old Testament, and they said, we never saw any prophet, any priest, any king, any preacher, any shepherd like this before this is unique and he is universal and he is helping and blessing everyone and no matter the challenge and no matter the predicament is able to solve every problem that's why it says they were surprised and they were astonished beyond measure and they said, he has done all things well, his greatness and his finality. Can I just show you how they saw how great he was? We're looking at Matthew chapter 12, his greatness. Matthew chapter 12, we're reading from verse 41. Jesus is great. 
greater than anyone that ever lived on earth, greater than anyone that is living on earth now, greater than anyone that will ever live on earth. It's incomparable. You cannot compare him with any prophet. You cannot compare him with any religious leader. You cannot compare him with any priest. He's great beyond the greatest of all men. Look at Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 41. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they, the men of Nineveh, repented at the preaching of Jonas and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. A greater than the Old Testament prophets is here a greater than contemporary prophets is here a greater than jonas is here and the queen of the south shall rise up in, in the judgment of this generation and shall condemn it for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth uh, to hear the wisdom of solomon and behold somebody there tell me a greater than Solomon is here. You think about all the kings, no king in the Old Testament was as rich as Solomon, was as wise as Solomon, and yet in his greatness, he wasn't up to the level in any way of the Lord Jesus Christ, a greater than Solomon is here. They recognized and they appreciated and they publicized the greatness of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking at Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7, and I'm reading from verse 12. Luke chapter 7, we're reading from verse 12. The perception of his greatness and the perception of his finality. Look at this, look at this. In Luke chapter 7, Reading from verse 12. Now, when he, came, when he came near the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. His compassion is on you tonight. Yeah. And said unto her, weep not. Weep not tonight. The problems are over. Yeah. And he came and touched the bear, the coffin. And they that bear him stood still. And he said, young man, I say unto thee, tell me, arise. And he that was dead sat up and, spe and began to speak. And delivered him to his mother. Look at verse 16. And there came a fear on all. And they glorified God, saying, What did they say? A great prophet is risen up among us. And the God, and that God has visited his people. He showed everybody that he was greater than anyone that had ever been before him. The greatest of all, the perception of his greatness and finality. Look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. I read from verse 53. John chapter 8, verse 53. Are thou greater than our father Abraham? Is, which is dead, and the prophets are dead. Who makest thou thyself? You see, when people say they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and they don't know the greatness of Christ, the greatness of Jesus Christ, they are kind of uh, moving between Christ and one old man in the village, between Christ and one um, whoever in the community. 
and they are saying that Christ is there, the man is there. On Sunday, they go to the man, they go to Christ. And then during the week, all the six days, they go to all those men and all those women that they think will solve their problem. They do not know the greatness of Christ. Once you know the greatness of Christ, it is Christ and Christ alone. It is Christ and Christ alone. Jesus and Jesus only. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And there is no one you can compare with him. These people were asking, Art thou greater than our father Abraham? Look at the answer in verse 58. Verse 58, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Is the I am that I am. Is the omnipotent one. It's the one that had been from all eternity. And then he came to this world and has gone back to heaven. Before Abraham was, I am. It's great. My Jesus is great. It's greater than all men, all women, all religious people, anywhere and everywhere. There's no name under the sun as great as his name. There's no priest under the sun as great as the priesthood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is all I need. He is all I want. He is all I will have. He is great. He will save. He will heal. He will deliver. He will set free. The greatest of all. God has given him a name above every name. Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us all... Your response. I want to hear your response. Pastor Ben, please mute yourself. Pastor Ben, please mute yourself. Oh, brother, Pastor Kakule, please mute yourself as well. Thank you so much for your patience. And I believe God that as we pray tonight, the power of God will visit us in a mighty and powerful way in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray together. Our Father and our God, the ancients of days, the El Shaddai, the omnipresent and omniscient, the greater than the greatest, the I am that I am, the unbeatable, the unreversible, the unconquerable, the almighty God, we worship you. We glorify you for this new month we have. May your name be magnified in Jesus' name. Amen. We come, as we come in this first uh, uh, Thursday of the month of August, we pray for divine visitation. We pray for divine intervention. We pray that as we pray together, impossibility will become possible in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And every strong host, Every strong man, every strong woman, as we decree the Lord God Almighty, we destroy their activity over our lives. There shall be Amen. liberation tonight. There shall be deliverance tonight. There shall be Amen. impartation tonight. The power Amen. of God. We locate everyone to my conference prayer meeting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We pray, we pray that. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray for God that the network, effort, that the network will be stable, that you will give us, you will clear the weather. Every kid that wants to interrupt the network, we pray that the Spirit of God will cross those out of our way, and you will give us a clear 
whether in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for the answer. Jesus. Men and brethren, brothers and sisters, I welcome every one of you in this uh, month of August. And this is the first uh, prayer meeting of Thursday prayer meeting of August. Amen. And I want to assure you tonight, as you will pray, there will be miracle. Amen. Divine intervention. Amen. As the Lord God Almighty we, we, we connect you and do great things in your life, you will share testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Open your mouth and bless the Lord. Open your mouth and appreciate Him. I want to hear you to pray. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your goodness over your life. Thank you for your goodness and mercy. protection over your life. Thank you for even entering in this August. God, me and my family, Father. For the great protection of power in your life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise your Father. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For his greatness, thank you, Father, for your manifestation, thank you for your love and care, oh, and that Father, I want to speak on each of you, I want to share the things that you stir that power, this evening that you cast them down by the Father, in the name of Jesus, and the Father that wants to see Jesus, and the power of the Spirit, thank you, Father, for your God of Lord, for the Spirit, you are right, can't show care, and the care that I'm right, 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 thank you, Father, Thank you, oh Lord, you know, Father. Thank you, oh Lord, you know, Father. Thank you, Father. We worship you, Lord, in your name, Lord. I hear men as young, Holy Spirit. Mighty and mighty. There is you, oh Lord, who is you, Father. Only you can do it, Father. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, Bring an offering. Bring an offering. Bring an offering and all the glory and worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The beauty of holiness. Celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the King of Kings. Celebrate the Lord of Lords. Celebrate the Lord of Lords. Celebrating God, marvelous doing. That is why you see we need to appreciate God so much before we before we we, we key in. We need to appreciate God. The Bible says, "Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name." 
bring an offering. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Remember, when the children of Israel came out from bondage, came out from, 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 from Israel, Miriam sang a song unto the Lord. And Miriam answered, he sang, he said, sing ye unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and the strider are the thrown into the sea. After great deliverance, he worshiped God. They see and they praise the name of the Lord. Praising the Lord of God. Celebrating God, marvelous day. You are going to once again open oh, because if you look at your life, there's a lot of things you need to celebrate God for. From January to this present time, God has been with you. God has provided for you. God has protected you. God has kept you. You see, it is the tendency of us to always forget the goodness of God. We always forget the goodness of God. It is a tendency of man. We always forget what God has done. Our talent, we always ask. God, give me two hundred dollars. God, give me five hundred dollars. We ask, we ask, we ask. We never take time to appreciate it. We